and the song is in my is in my local language but it says the Lord will not let me to be an orphan the Lord will not leave me the Lord will not allow me to suffer and that was the song that I will sing every time and so the Lord heard my cry in that time and season of loneliness. The Lord heard my cry in that time of sad time. The Lord heard my cry. He heard that I needed help. And I called him to save you. I know that you will not leave me, nor forsake me. And the Bible says, our God is the God that answers our prayers. And so in that time and season, one day I was on the phone, and while I was singing that song, I heard my name, and I thought it was a voice that I didn't know, but it was my older brother that came to get me. He said, get yourself together, we're leaving from here, we are going to Ghana, the country in, the, in America. And that's how my life changed.
And my mother said she went in prayer and the Lord revealed to her some things that she had forgotten years ago. Over 20 plus years. And I'm so curious and I say yes, I want to hear it because man of God, I, I sometimes wonder, I was like, why is it that I have so much challenges and battles? Why is my life different from others? And these are the questions that I was asking God and I was asking myself until it was revealed to me that when I was conceiving the womb, my mother had just had a baby and the, my little sister was two years old. And so my dad said that he was not ready for another baby. And so that she get rid of me. So I was that pregnancy that they rejected. And so my mother said that she didn't know what to do and she doesn't know how to carry out the abortion, right? And so my dad said, may his soul rest in peace. My dad said, I will prepare, I will get the medicine, the medication for you. That was in Africa. And so the women, they did the abortion. And my mom said for two weeks, she was bleeding and she couldn't walk. And then after two weeks, she was healed and everything was good. The doctor confirmed that everything was good. And then a couple of months later, I was still there. I was still there. I was still there. And then the Lord told her that when you took the medication, I had him in my hand. So, so, so the medication did not affect this one. I, 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 I put him in my hands in the womb. I cover him up. I clothed him up. So that whatever you did could not touch this one. He's been chosen by me. I pick him so you see. So the devil cannot touch me. No any wish can touch me. Because God himself preserved him in the womb. When my mother and my father tried to destroy me. God. God save me. God save me. You see, man of God, that's why I love God so much. Because if it wasn't for Him, I would have been dead and gone. That's why I call Him Savior. The more you say, I'm not doing to be. The more you say, God, I'm not doing to be. Somebody put their hands together for Jesus.
powerful. Hallelujah. Savior, Savior, Savior. Whilst others are calling, do not pass me by. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go razabaya nadabazu. Zendalabaya. Lama dalabaye. Mandorobo zebaye. Shada da 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 da. Shada da 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 da. Lima zogi. Lima kodiru zemandalabaya. Oh, somebody thank God. The Christ of the man, the first Sunday of the man. Why don't you worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. And this praise that continually be in my mouth. Let the Lord go, my soul, and all that is within me. That is the holy name. Go raise the people, shout the Lord by your Lord. Hallelujah. 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 He's our Savior. Hallelujah. He's our Redeemer. He's our healer. A very present help in time of trouble. Hallelujah. 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 See what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. What a devil meant for destruction. God has turned it around. Hallelujah. So they tried to destroy Minister Shepherd, but God has another plan. I know many of us can identify with that testimony. Hallelujah. 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 We give you all the praise. Oh, let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We cannot do anything by our capacity, by our ability, by our strength. But with you, we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. We pray that you open the eyes of the blind. That those who are deaf and cannot hear, we pray that you open their ears, spiritual and physical. Oh Lord, let the dead rise. Let the dead lame walk. Let the blind see. We give you all the glory. We pray for restoration and recovery. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today is the first Sunday of the month. It is a constant your testimony, very, very powerful. The first one was powerful. The second one was more powerful. Hallelujah. The first one, so what the Lord ministered to me as we are telling your testimony is that you find yourself in very dry places, but it's okay. Those are called, it's a count your blessings and name them one by one. As you focus on what the Lord has done in the past, the Lord will do mighty things in the future. Hallelujah. So you were in the desert, watching over the, 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 the rise, and you look like you were alone. That's how that's how your promotion came. Somebody, don't look at how lonely you are. Don't look at how secluded you are. Don't look at who is calling you, who is not calling you. If God be for you, who can be against you? David was in the wilderness. Oh, man, so man, God, but God knew me. God had his email address, God had his physical address, and he was lifted up to become the king of Israel. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The testimony has touched me that I don't even know how to continue. Hallelujah. <laughs> but we will continue. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know Dr. Ejapon is watching. Dr. Enoch Ejapon, I want to encourage you and strengthen you. He's been watching for a while on our Sundays. I pray that God will strengthen you and anoint you to overcome. To overcome. God is going to give you a special anointing that you are going to have a dream. When you have a dream, God will show you what you must do. In the name of Jesus. Sister Lord, God bless you so much. I pray that God will make you a missionary and an evangelist. That very soon your location will change. In Jesus' name. Amen. Is there anyone else who is watching that I have to mention the names? 
Now, Sister Maureen. Sister Maureen, I'm praying for you right now. If you can stretch your hand, as I stretch my hand, I pray for you that God will meet you at the place of your need and that there will be a transformation in your life. There will be a transition in your life. There will be victory in your life. I break every spiritual protocol that has come against you in the name of Jesus. Arise, shine. The light has come in Jesus' name. Amen. So somebody. Oh, Jim Shed. Jim Shed has been also watching us from India. Oh, Jim Shed, I pray for the return of your family. I know we've been texting back and forth. I pray for the return of your family in the name of Jesus. Oh, uh, the, the man texted me and said a pastor in Texas has separated his family. The wife and some of the children have gone away. And it's the fault. I pray in the name of you. Don't have any bitterness. Just forgive. Forgive. And see what the Lord will do. Ah, bah, 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 bah. I pray that the spirit that took them away. That spirit will bring them back. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good. And all the time. So we sang this song. Savior, Savior, Savior. You know that our Savior is the Lord of Lords, Amen. the King of Kings. His name is Jesus. But we have human saviors too. Hallelujah. May yes. God send a Savior to you. Amen. Oh, somebody didn't hear me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, it's a nice thing to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. Is it not beautiful to be in the presence of God? Yes. Savior, Savior. Savior, 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 yeah. Oh, no, so I've been crying. Receive now.
is what he's going to do in you. Hallelujah. Amen. So when I wait on God for money and it has delayed, God is more interested in character. God is more interested in patience. God is more interested in what is forming in my mind and my heart equally as what is given to me. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we are waiting, we have to have this mindset that God is working in our heart behind the scenes. Hallelujah. So we look at the benefits of waiting. So I mentioned a story about a Nigerian pastor, big pastor who had traveled to Canada to do a program. Only one person showed up. Yeah. I'm saying this to encourage that young pastor. You have started, only two people show up in your church, in the church. It's enough. Yeah. Somebody say it's enough. Yeah. It's enough. Ah, da, 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 da. It's oh, enough. man, say it's enough. Man of God. It's That's why in your story, you find yourself in strange places in your life. Strange, strange places like this church. People say you are mighty. What are you doing here? But your story, I uh, connect with most of us. Amen. I have somebody in my family, the same thing. But that's greatness. Yes. Ah, 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 ah. Yes. So when you that is where you know where you belong and where you don't belong. You go to a place where the people are full of pride, you don't belong there. You kill your anointing. Razema go debo zema gadabaya baya. Randa mazoma delebo jande. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So waiting is so difficult. Nobody wants to wait. How many people go to the doctor's office and they say wait for five hours? You leave. How many of us will not leave? Let's be sincere. <laughs> How many will go to McDonald's? You sit there for three hours. If not taking your order, you will leave. Nobody wants to wait. God sets his children up. God sets everybody up. Whether you're a bishop, a pope, an evangelist, whatever you are, apostle, you have to wait. Hallelujah. Amen. If you can't stand waiting, you can't walk with God. If you can't wait, you can't walk with God. Yes. Everybody who walked with God had to wait. God appeared before a man called Abraham. He said, be blameless before me. Walk before me and be perfect. Amen. He said, I'll give you a son. He had to wait for 25 years. Hmm. Which good God will do that? Yes. So if you don't understand God, you curse God and die. Like Job's wife told him. He said, curse God and die. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. That's in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. I'm just going over some of the things we heard last week. Waiting is so powerful that nobody wants to wait. Nobody wants to wait. Hallelujah. But today we want to talk about your wait is over. Your wait is over. Oh, somebody, you didn't hear me. Your wait is over. Do you know why, man of God, it's very difficult to understand that the wait is over? Let me prove it to you from physics. Those who have studied physics, there's something called Newton's laws. This is how we learned it so many years ago. Some of the kids here were not born when we studied physics. Newton's laws of motion. This is how, they said Newton's first law, it has three laws. The first law, the third law is very simple. You always learn a simple one, the students here. Go from simple to difficult. So <laughs> memorize the simple formula well. First, the first law of Newton says action and reaction, they are equal, but opposite in direction. That one you can easily memorize it. But the first law goes like this. Everybody continues in a state of rest or, or uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled by an external force to act otherwise. That's how we, we memorize it. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we memorize it, you have to read Nelcon and Parker. That was the textbook then. But man of God, I looked at the definition again as I was preparing for today, Mr. Frankie. And you know Americans, they like to simplify things. This is how they simplified it. What this? They said if your body is at rest, it will continue to be at rest. To be at rest means you are motionless. So look at the book in my hand. It's at rest. If your body is at rest, it will what? Continue to be at rest. If your body is in motion, it will continue to be in motion. I'm in motion now. If your body is in motion, it will continue to be in motion unless acted on by an external force. What this means is this, Sister Yuna, our situations will not change unless there's an external force. So if you are moving, nothing can stop you unless an external force can be a demonic power. If you are at rest, you can't change unless there's an external force. And I want to prove to everyone that that external force is in their mind. You cannot change your situation unless your mind changes. 
As a man thinks, so is he. I don't know if I'm making sense. So somebody, if I say your weight is forward, do you know why? If you have been sitting for a long time, you don't know how. I've been sitting for this long. How can my sitting, my resting position change? The man, there should be a revolution in the mind before the situation can change. So, so important. Hallelujah. So my situation, my weight is over. So Celestia, I don't know if you are listening to me. Your weight is what? Over. Over means it is over. over. The weight is over. Hallelujah. Amen. And that over has to take place in the world. In the mind. Amen. It's so key. Amen. It's so important. Amen. So God appeared before Abraham and told him a year from now you have a son. Sarah laughed. I understand Sarah. She was in the flesh. She was in the physical. She was in the physical realm. She laughed. Why? Because everybody at rest will continue to be at rest. But she didn't know that there was a supernatural force coming to act on the situation, to change the situation. Hallelujah. God said, why did you laugh? Sarah said, I didn't laugh. And we all know the rest of the story. A year from that time, Sarah had a son. So somebody who has waited and waited and waited, Sister Jackie, any time there is a wait, the spirit of delay comes over. And it takes over the situation. Some people are waiting to get married. The spirit of delay has taken over. So now they don't believe anymore. Somebody, I want you to turn your hope into expectation. Oh, you've not heard that before. You have been hoping, hoping. Now, expect to be that husband. Expect to be that wife. Otherwise, you'll be talking to that man. Every day you go to the bank, you're talking to your potential husband. But you don't know. Because you think you are still waiting. Oh, I don't know if I'm making sense. You think you are still what? Waiting. But I'm here to tell you your wait is what? Over. Do you know why you can't believe it? God told Sarah. And Sarah did not believe by faith, Sarah received strength in her womb to give birth to a baby. Yeah. So your weight is what? Over. Wow. Hallelujah. You want to start a business. You have always been talking about it. But the weight is what? Over. Wow. I'm not here to tell stories. Because Minister uh, Constant, the testimony he gave, he could have died. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when I was coming this morning, the message will make an impact to somebody and change somebody's life. We are not here. Oh, imagine we have 600 Facebook likes and it's not touching anybody. We want impartation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. The wait is over. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So when he told Abraham, Sarah was laughing. How will the situation change? The situation, Sister Celestine, will not change without a supernatural power, without a supernatural force. The wait is indeed over. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's over. Yes, that is why when the angel of the Lord went to Zachariah, the father of John the Baptist, he said, you have a son, Matthew. Zachariah doubted. Because they've been in that situation for so long. What is going to make that situation change? It is the mind. The mind. So I'm talking about two things. The mind and the supernatural power of God. Oh, somebody, I want to give you one minute to adjust your mind. Tell, let your mind know that the wait is over. The wait is over. Yes, yes the over. wait is over. I declare it. Yes, can, can we see our situations differently? Yes. If you can't see it differently, you can't change it. Yes. Can you see your crisis, your troubles, your problems that they are over? Can you change your mind? Somebody, you have not been able to sleep in the past one year. Everybody at rest will continue to be at rest. If you don't do anything, nothing will happen. You have not been able to sleep for one year. What will cause that person to be able to sleep? So what is? There are two or three factors. The person is overthinking about something. What you can't change, don't worry about. can't change something. Why are you worrying about it? You don't worry about something you cannot change. Some people cannot sleep because of what people, they think people are saying about them. 
You can't control what people say about you. Yes. I don't know if our ministry. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So anybody at the sound of my voice, you can't sleep. When you take this nugget and this medication, you'll be able to sleep like a baby. Mm. Bible says it gives his beloved word. Sleep. Amen. Those who cannot sleep, there's a stress on their mind. Yes. There's something they are worrying about. So they go to sleep, that will come and visit them. That will become a spirit. But today it is going. Amen. Oh, you hear me? Amen. Hallelujah. The bill has not been paid. The doctor's report is negative. The marriage relationship problems in marriages. Cast your burdens on the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I can't change my spouse. Amen. It is only God who can change the spouse. Amen. So why are you worrying about that man or that woman? Go on your knees. It's called a school of immunology. Yes. Otherwise, you fight a losing battle. Yes. As you shift your mind, you renew your mind. Let's start from Romans chapter 12, verse 2. This is an old traditional scripture. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according, to, according as God has dealt to every man Amen. the measure of faith. Thank you so Amen. much, Taylor. Thank you so much. Amen. Mr. Kulus, you are welcome. Sister Charlotte, you are welcome. Amen. Mr. Kulus, it's always a pleasure to see you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Please, let's go back to the verse 2 again. It says that, and be not what? Conform to this world. You can't change your mind, you can't change your life. Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Imagine that somebody is walking. Ah, as for me, my father's house is cursed. As for me, my mother's house is cursed. Ah, this is what killed my mother. If you are a believer, you can't talk like that. Even if that is true. Why? Christ has delivered me from the curse of the law. He made the curse for me. For it is written, curse is any man that is hung on the cross. That the blessing of Abraham will come upon me. Galatians 13 verse 3. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I can't walk like the others walk. I can't be conformed to the detections of this world. That's what it's saying. I can't talk like people are talking. There are mothers house people die early. I can't talk like that. Even if that is true, I will go against the grain. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ has delivered me from the curse of the law. The Bible says he has delivered me from the kingdom of darkness and transformed me into the light of his dear son in the book of Colossians. Let the redeemed of the Lord God say so, Mr. Virginia. So now we change our vocabulary. We change our grammar. Even as you are having dreams and the dreams are somebody having a soul. And probably once upon a time, your mother told you that somebody had a soul and it was coming upon me. But in your time, it should be different. Amen. But it's not wishful thinking. You are just a jar. You are just like a Jessica, thinking God will do something. No, you have to walk with God. You have to work with God. Hallelujah. Amen. So you wake up. I will not die from this affliction. Our mothers and our fathers, when they confronted these situations, you say, you know, they went to the voodoo. Some went to the juju. But you say you are a Christian and now you are crying. Where is your God? Somebody, I don't know if you are hearing me. Yes. Where is your God? Those who have done mathematics, there's something called transformation. 
a subject called we have rotation, we have reflection, we have translation. Hallelujah. Amen. If I have the mic like this and I turn it this way, I've changed it. The direction. I've changed the direction. So I'm going to challenge everyone. If the mind today is the same next week, you have not changed. I'm talking to myself all the time. Yes, yes, Lord. There should be that change. Now, yesterday I bought some eggs. I made some oats for the kids. And I bought some eggs. Isn't it amazing how you heat eggs, you increase the temperature of eggs, and, you know, and it changes from liquid to solid. Amen. Amen. I want our mind to change. When your mind changes, the situation will change. Amen. You will not complain about evil powers again. Yes. Hallelujah! Amen. So these are old methods that are proving in the process of time to deliver people Amen. and set people free. Amen. He said, be what? Transform! Next week, I hope we have testimonies yes. of those whose minds have been transformed. Amen. It has to change. Amen. Be yet transformed by the word renewing of the mind. Amen. The topic today is your weight is over. Amen. If you can't believe it, you can't have it. My weight is over. Yes, Amen. the weight is over. Amen. We have to change from hope to expectation. Amen. Otherwise, it will be the modus operandi. The status quo. This is how it is in my family. As for my family, nobody builds a house. As for my family, people don't go to seven days. No, 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 you can't talk like that. You cannot talk like that. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. You are different. Amen. You have yourself from the scriptures. He said, do not what? Conform to how your father's house they talk. Do not align yourself to how people in your family they think. By what? Be what? Transform. Change yourself. The Holy Spirit is not going to do it for you. By the renewing of your mind. If you come from a family who is, which is afraid and fearful, you cannot today be afraid anymore. You begin to exercise the scriptures. Fast and pray. And you come out. Then they will ask you, why are you not dead? They are trying to kill you. Why are you still alive? Say, my God has delivered me. Amen. Amen. They put Daniel in the, in the, in the, uh, in the furnace or in the lion's den first. The king came. Daniel, oh Daniel, has your God been able to deliver you? Yes, sir. He said, the God whom I stand before Daniel. Yes. Amen. He knew what he was talking about. Yes. He knew that he was different. Yes. Otherwise, you will die even before your time. It's not enough to go to church. What we require is the word of God. That is the power of God. The apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. This is the power. Yes. When your mind is renewed, you may not have a thousand dollars in your account, but you said you are below there. Yes. You are more than convinced. Yes. I'm not moved by what I see. Yes. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm moved by the word of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The marriage is at the bottom. But he says it as well. Amen. The devil is fighting tooth and nail. You cannot sleep. But he said tomorrow, Pastor Sam said, I should sleep like a baby. Tonight, Amen. I'm going to sleep like a baby. Amen. I'm going to cast all my burdens upon you before you tear it for me. Oh, yes. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Yes. It's a lot of me, for my yoke is easy. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't worry about the bills. You can't control. What you can't control, don't worry about. Yes. You can't control what people say, whether people like you or they don't like you. All you have to do is to pray and believe. Hallelujah. Amen. So what is this? Now, we are not going to read this because many of us know that in Luke chapter 5, in John chapter 5, John chapter 5, there is a man who has been sick for 38 years. 38 years. Hey! And then, he was at a place called Bethesda. Bethesda means a city with five porches. Five means grace. A porch is something that has a covering, a canopy. But this uh, Bethesda was near a sheep market. Oh, somebody, you can hear me. Those who, who know sheep or goats, they, they make a lot of mess. Hallelujah. So before you go there, you have to pass through the mess. And this is this is ancient uh, Jerusalem. Yeah. So you have to step on the mess. Some of these people, I don't think they have shoes. Yeah. How many of us, we go to our homes, especially the women, 
they have shoes. It's like uh, a what? A gallery. They have a shoe gallery. I remember I've shared this story many times. When I came to this country, Mr. Bulus, my suitcase, I have to hit it and close it. That's how I do it. <laughs> now we have multiple suitcases. <laughs> you go to people's home, cars line up. But when we're in Ghana or Africa, we have to walk barefooted. Praise God! As God not be done well, yes. look at the transformation. Yes. Yet still, we are not happy. Mm. He moved them from Egypt. And they said, Can you also prepare food for us in the wilderness? They tested God. And God said, These people, they are wicked and stiff naked. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at the shoe I'm wearing. Yes. I could have worn another shoe. Some years back, I didn't have that option. Yes. Yes, I had only one. Amen. That and I couldn't even go to certain churches in, in Ghana. <laughs> Because those churches all the night and the uh, rich people, they would change their shoes and their shirt. With the friend, that's why I ended up in the Indian. Because you wear slippers, you are subject. <laughs> I went and said, oh, I'm in my comfort zone. <laughs> but then I chose this shoe, I knew I would have chosen another one. Amen. So God will look at this. Amen. Look at what I've done for this man. Amen. And he's still complaining. Mm -hmm. What we can't control, don't worry about it. Go home and sleep. And look at this one who is in control. Amen. He is in control. All over the world, Master Jesus is in control. Amen. You are driving. Yes. Don't worry. The bills, let them call you. You'll be surprised. Next week, the bill is still there. And you, are, you are still alive. <laughs> the bill is still there. You are still alive. Yes. You know what? I when it became so tough, he said, hey, how can this? These people are calling me left and right. Yes. Let them call. Let them call. Amen. They can't kill you. I remember some, some years back before we paid off the Mercedes, it was very tough. The people said they will come and possess. I said, ah, they're coming to possess. We're left with two or three uh, payments to finish. I said, ah, in this apartment, the people, when they come in, we can't find them. We can't see. They will take it away. At the point, I said, oh, they can come and do whatever they want to do. <laughs> they let them come and do whatever they want. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, some of the things, if you are not careful, it may kill some people before they happen. What we can't control, let's leave it to God. Yes. Who can control all things, Mr. Frankie? God. Ah, can't have us so can't have us. Because the devil, those are his tricks. Some people you cannot kill. But he makes sure that they worry and they fear. But today, worry and fear, they are over. He said, The best of the earth, Mr. Shala, they don't work, but our Father feeds them. The best of the earth. The flowers, he said, Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like the lilies of the valley. But tomorrow, those flowers will be scorched by the sun. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So he said, let's realign our minds. Yes, Lord. United Nations did a study. They said the biggest raw material, natural resource, it's not silver, it's not gold, it's not oil and gas. The mind. Amen. The mind. Amen. If you like, take $10,000 as I agree. Give it to an Asian. Mm. Take the same ten thousand dollars. Give it to an African. Mm. Take ten thousand dollars. Give it to an European. Mm. Say in two years you want to see what they've done with their money. Mm. I will not go forward. Mm. I will leave it here. <laughs> it's the mind. The mind is key. If you want to change a child, change the mind. Amen. That is why when you hear about pastors brainwashing people, it's the mind. Yeah. You work on the people's mind. So conversely, mm. if you want to change. If you want to change your uh, value, your wealth, this scripture is powerful. Amen. I challenge everyone, get the scripture every day. In the next six months, your life will change. Amen. This is not lotto or lottery. This is not trying and error. It's proven. And I'm basing it on Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the Lord will not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate upon it day and night. In so doing, you will make your way prosperous and have good sources. To meditate is to matter. M-U-T-T-E-R. Hallelujah. Amen. You know why we are afraid? The word of God, the volume, the volumetric capacity of the word of God in us is low. It's low. Now, Christians, everybody wants already be food. The pastor should go and prepare the food and bring it. Nobody wants to take the Bible today. I want to meditate. To read is different from to meditate. If you meditate, I use this analogy a lot. It's like Sister Celestine. It's like 
uh, you have tissue paper and you put it in ink. You see how it soaks it. It's called capillary effect. Capillary effect. So when you meditate, the word of God is soaking in your soul. Amen. It's soaking in your soul. Amen. Capillary effect. Amen. So when you wake up, you are strong. Amen. Let them say that you are sick. You tell the doctors, for me, this sickness is nothing. Amen. Yes, yes. You cannot yes, say that yes. if you are not equipped with the way. You cannot. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why Jesus was confident. He said, the God of this world coming. Was full of the way, so we shouldn't conform to this world. This world, there's there are systems of the world, the way the world does things. If your white chromosomes is this, if your sugar content is this, then you belong to this. But we should be conformed by the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, 6 to 8. We have to check our minds. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth what? Speaks. We have to check our mind. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Yes, say that, please, pause there. If you have the peace of God, what will prevent you from sleeping? So we are worried about things that we shouldn't worry about. I don't worry about the church. Amen. When the bills are not paid, God himself is the owner. So soon I tell God, God, this is your church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I have enough to worry about than to worry about the church. He said, be anxious for nothing. Be careful for nothing. Worry about nothing. By all things through what? Prayer. All things by prayer. Somebody has this on his Facebook page. All things by prayer. Let's go back to that verse, Mr. Jimmy, verse 6. But in everything by prayer. So everything by what? Prayer. But what people say, Pastor Sam, I prayed and prayed and prayed. God has not heard. 38 years, this man was at the pool of Bethesda. My God. Pool of Bethesda. Yes. And what is this pool had a miraculous component. It had a curative ability and power. The pool, those who have read Luke uh, John chapter 5, the, the water was said that at a particular season, at the stirring of the water, whoever jumped into the pool was healed. This was supernatural. Amen. It's going against physics. Hallelujah. Amen. So what is this man, every year, 38 years, is that you know, the man has been there. Oh, I want us to be sympathetic a bit. Amen. Yes, yes. I want us to be compassionate a bit. The man has been there for what? 38 years. Oh, my goodness. Do you know what has gone on in the man's head? Now he has conformed to the standards. He knows that his case is over. He knows that it doesn't matter. It's an, uh, it's, it doesn't count. Hopeless. Hopeless, useless. Do you know certain translations cause him invalid? Invalid. They didn't use his name. Hallelujah. Invalid. Yes. So now the man's mind has changed. He doesn't have any hope anymore. And that's what happens when you wait for something for a long time. The spirit of delay comes and takes over. So what is Jesus appeared on the scene? Jesus overcomes every law of physics. Every law of chemistry, Amen. every physical law. Mr. Bulus, you are a mechanical engineer. I quoted Newton's first law earlier. Amen. And I know that when we were in school, we used the old method. Everybody will continue in this state of rest or uniform pushing a straight line, unless compelled by an external force to act otherwise. But before coming to minister, I just look at the definition again. In America, they said, which is the same, a body at rest will still remain at rest. Yes. A body in motion will continue to be in motion, Amen. unless acted on by an external force. So, if my mindset is set on something that is wrong, it will just be there. Mm -hmm. Unless something powerful touches it. Amen. And that is why we have to what? Renew the mind. It's not going to go in a day. Especially some minds, 
the environment is coming from is coming from a dark place. It has to be a continuous effort. I'm not talking about prayer. I'm talking about meditation. Amen. Those who are watching, maybe you cannot sleep. I challenge you. The word of God, the Psalms, take it like food and eat it. And to change your mind. Amen. When it changes your mind, your life will follow your mind. You will not complain anymore. You will not fear anymore. Before you realize your sleeping time is at 10 p.m. 8 p.m. you are asleep. Is God not wonderful? Yeah. Now, what this? This man, Mr. Frankie, at the pool of Bethesda, Jesus visited him. He said, Do you want to be made whole? Jesus knew about his tuition. He said, I've been here 38 years. Anytime I try to get ahead of the other people, I don't succeed. Then somebody else will go into the water. Now they call something ageism. Ageism. Where they said, if you are about 45 and you apply for jobs, they, said they, they will tell you they don't discriminate, but they, they, they base it on age, ageism. So you don't conform your mind to ageism. Amen. You don't conform your mind to family tradition and family trees. Yes. That is what killed my father. This is what killed. You are different. But you have to start pronouncing it on your head. Yes. Oh, I am yes. different. I will not die before my time. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. No welcome formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me, judgment I condemn. No divination, no enchantment against the sons of Jacob shall stand. He has delivered me from the kingdom of darkness into the light of his dear son. Continue to repeat this. Anything you say becomes a habit. Any habit became, becomes a spirit. Before you realize, now things have changed around you. Because the word of God has power. It's the power of God on the salvation. He said, be careful for nothing, by all things. So what is, let me go back to the John chapter 5. Jesus appeared before the man. He said, do you want to be changed? Do you want to be made? This is a cataclysmic change. This is a change that is happening. It's not the season where the pool will be changed or will be tied by an angel. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords himself, Jesus Celestine, has appeared. He said, do you want to be made whole? He said, I don't have anybody. No, that is not the physics of the present situation. The present situation, you don't need anybody to go before you. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, do you want to be made whole? That man's, that man's mind was just like our minds here. Can any good thing come from Nazareth? People will be like, Pastor Sam, you don't know. Last week when I came to church, I went home and my bank account was still the same. I'm not talking about magic. I'm not talking about microwave. <laughs> I'm not talking about microwave. Where I'll say, bring a thousand dollars. You go home, you see hundred thousand. No, 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 no. We don't believe that in this house. Hallelujah. Amen. Ta -ta -ba 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 -ba. He said, what your salvation will fear and trembling. If God does that, God is a wicked God. But our God is not wicked. He wants to work with us. He wants to change our character. He wants to change our attitude. He wants to change us. So the man was at the pool of Bethesda. He was there. He, he wanted a status quo. The way things are done to happen. The every time, he said, now, let me change even where I ran. But he was an invalid. He was destitute. He was, he was disabled. So maybe this is how he runs to the pool. This time he said, let me go this way. He has changed the vectors. He has changed his velocity. Nothing has happened. But Jesus was there. That's why somebody don't say, oh, we went to all night last week. Nothing happened. No, 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 no. You don't determine the times and the seasons. God is sovereign. Amen. What you are waiting is the most difficult part. That is why many young pastors, they've gone for Kudu and Juju. They could not wait. Hallelujah. Yeah. They could not wait. So Bethesda, Let's just look at it. We can just project it. John chapter 5. Bethesda. He said there was a man at the pool of water. Bethesda. This is what Bethesda also means, Mr. Frankie. It means house of grace. House of restoration. House of favor. Somebody who have waited for a long time. Your favor has come. Your grace has come. God is granting you speed. So I don't just want you to receive it. Let that mind shift. Now, if we had a digital, if we had the analog clock, you see how the clock is shifting. It shifts. When the mind has shifted, they said they are going to let people off at your workplace. You say no. Even if by God, 
allow this to happen, I will find a new one. That's a different mindset. People are talking bad things about you at the workplace. He said, no, anybody who touches me touches the apple of God's eye. Yes. And you are confident in that. Amen. You don't curse them. You let God fight your battles for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's go to the other verses now. So that wait is over. Now it's going to take, take, now let me make this statement. It's going to take a lot for the mind to shift to accept what is happening. That's why when God told Abraham, you have a son a year from now. You have waited for long. It didn't look possible. It didn't look palpable. It didn't look consistent with natural laws. How come? What has changed? Yes. What has changed? Yes. It's called the supernatural ability of God. Amen. The supernatural power of God. Amen. We have to believe in the miracle working power of God. God has said you don't have a womb. But I'm telling you. Yes. Hey. Otherwise, the God himself is like an idol. God is not an idol. They say you cannot marry. And you have even heard it in dreams. I'm here to cancel that order. Amen. God will give you a wife. Amen. God will give you a husband. Amen. You will defy family problems. As a man thinking, so is he. Amen. Say, oh, Amen. Yes. As a man thinking, so is he. So, what are you going to think about? The pool of the test. Five porches. Five porches. Amen. Bethesda means grace. Amen. And just yesterday, as I was preparing for this message, I saw something on Facebook. I think it's to Anaba in Bol- Bolgatanga and uh, Mensa Otabel. They are having a program in Bolga, March something. And they call it Bethesda. Mm. And they call it, they say, Restoration, Refreshment, Revival, Repentance. And there's another one. Hallelujah. Amen. So today, all of us, let's receive refreshment. Amen. All of us, let's receive yes, restoration. Amen. That wait is over. Let's tell our minds. The long wait is over. Even if somebody at 38 waiting, it was over. Hallelujah. The old mind will try to come back. Let's refuse that old mind. Hallelujah. Because we need that new mind to overcome this world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. You have had many miscarriages, but your weight is over. Amen. Be flexible with what God is doing. Align your tongue with the word of God. Let's allow align our tongues with the word of God. Let's believe the promises of God. It is very difficult to know it's over when you focus on the past. When you focus is on the past, it's difficult to know it's over. We cannot focus on the past. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll close very soon. Amen. 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 Now Romans 12, 12. Let's look at Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Now, Pastor Sam, you talked about the way is over. What are the ways to wait on the Lord? Now you don't wait and have wishful thinking. If God will do it, He will do it. No. That should not be our attitude. So Romans 12:12. 12, 12. Romans 12:12. 12, 12. Rejoicing in rejoicing in hope, patience in patient in tribulation, continuing in instant in prayer. Amen. Amen. Continuing instant in prayer. So prayer is not powerful if there's no continuity. Is the continuity of prayer. If you look through the Bible, throughout the Bible, it says the effective fervent prayer of the righteous man was yes, yes, prevailing man. Yes, it's the continuity yes, of right. prayer. So you are going through trials. You are crying. But you are still praying. Yes. That's why some people are still praying because they don't have this revelation. They don't know that it's the continuation. I know I've given this illustration so many times. As Shiloh or Shiloh, Anna and the family, they were praying. Yes. He didn't know that his cup was running over. Yes. Press down, shake it together and run it over. 
So on that faithful day, on that faithful year, she went to pray again. He like had her mouth. Oh, yeah. He said, You are drunk with alcohol. Yeah. He said, So early in the morning, how can I be drunk? She was full of the spirit. Amen. So the thing you always say, I pastor the biggest church in Texas. Yeah. I'm preaching at the Dallas Cowboys yeah, Stadium. Yeah. Oh, I have the best oil and gas company yeah, in the world. Yeah. Ah, you continue to say it will yes, happen. Yes, the best church. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. The devil has told you you are not beautiful. You want to say I'm the most beautiful woman on earth. Yeah, oh man, so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. The devil has told you, oh, you don't dress well. You say, oh, my shoe. Oh, look at how wonderful my shoe is. Yeah, you say, you know, this shoe I'm wearing. I love it. I think it's everywhere. It's not that purpose. Yeah. I don't care. Where I go and the pastor is wearing a shoe with a mouth like this. <laughs> Man is the best. They have all the shoes. They have everybody's shoes. But this one. I wear it every day. But I saw your shoes nice. I said, yes. Yes, yes. I don't even remember how much I got it. Amen. Mr. Gulus, you see that desk in my office. I want to like $25. <laughs> this is my very dog. I have to close the door. Before it. So when it comes to the office, I'll use one to, to chuck it like that. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Yes, wonderful. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, yes, Lord. Constant in prayer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to love it like that. <laughs> so you are rejoicing in hope. Your patience is afflicted. Continue in the car. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is a shout out. Continue instantly. Yeah. You may not know why you are praying, yeah. but you pray and God will reveal things of yeah. you. That gets to a time when it's so dry and dark. But I still believe. Amen. The promises of God are indeed yes and amen. amen. Yes. Expectation. Yes, Lord. If you are waiting and you are worrying, you are defeating the purpose. Amen. You can't wait and worry. Yes. You can't wait and be afraid. Otherwise, you are throwing yourself into the contest of the devil. Yes, Psalm 56, 3 to 4. Let's look at Psalm 56. If you are waiting, you have to be patient and focused. Faithful is he who has promised you, and he also will bring you to pass. Oh, my wait is over. My wait is over. What time, what time I am afraid I will trust in, I will trust in thee. In God I will praise his word. In God have I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Amen. I will Amen. not be afraid what man can do unto me. Yes. I will put my trust in the Lord. Amen. We have to depend on the Lord as we wait. Amen. We have to we have to acknowledge his sovereignty. Sometimes to wait is to do nothing. Be still and know that I am God. Oh, let's rise on our feet. Oh, I can hear your prayer. I can hear your prayer. I can hear your prayer. Two or three prayer points. 
We are praying for marriages. The couple is believing God that there will be a turn around in the marriage. They have waited and waited. It's not turned around. Let's pray for a turn around in marriages. We are praying marriages, couples that are looking for a baby. We are praying that they wait for a baby to be over. The same yesterday, today, and forever. God of Sarah, answer us swiftly. Let us pray. Those who are believing God for marriage to be married, let's pray that the wait is indeed over. That this year they will be the bone of their bone and the flesh of their flesh. Sacrifice is key. Hallelujah. Amen. So whatever sacrifice you can sacrifice. It can be, I don't want to mention any amount. What? No, then right now. We have communion to take. Hallelujah. Amen. If we can put a zeal, please. This is a sacrifice against any blood that has been shed. Even by my ancestors. You know that some of our fathers, the blood people are alive. They buried people alive. Some slaves who came to them, they buried them alive. Travesty of justice. Oh Lord God, we pray. This sacrifice, oh Lord God. Anything that has shed innocent blood that is speaking against us, as we sacrifice, deliver your children. In the name of Jesus. Any blood that is speaking against your children, Father, have mercy and deliver us. Have mercy and deliver us. In the name of Jesus. Shanda Bazoga de Bada. Randa Lava Zogi de Mushan de Limorevi. Nayenda Lava Zogi de Mushanda. So this is a sacrificial offering. So what, against, what about those who can't sacrifice today? Those who can't can sacrifice another time. Yes. Those who can sacrifice today. So that any bloodline. And you see, the devil is quite accused of the brethren. You know that the devil knows more about my family, my life, my family line than me myself. The devil, Mr. Branch, he knows what killed my father's father. I've not even found out. The devil knows the things that fight men in my father's house. Have you asked yourself what fights women in your father's house? It's so key. 
Because the blood is powerful. You see, the life is in the blood. The life is in the blood. I pray, Kakozu, Rundi, Randa Bahanda, Rizagadaha, Aiza Bahadohi. Anything in your blood that speaks against you. That is why when you come from certain families, don't say, oh, when I finish my PhD, I'm finished. When you come from certain families, don't say, oh, when I get $100,000, I'm finished. The forces you are fighting with. I've gone back to physics. The forces you are fighting with, they are bigger than your PhD. They are bigger than your credentials. That's why you have your eyes have to be open. So there are certain people you don't go among them. So we are going to take our communion. Or oh, let's take our offering. Those who have regular offerings. Yes, okay, the communion. Yes. Hey, Oh, you see, today you don't want to miss. You don't want to miss the power of God to transform lives. That as you take this communion, may it impact your bloodline and change you. Hallelujah. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Most of your problems is through the bloodline. Some people are not married because of bloodlines. Some people are going through financial trouble because of the bloodlines. Hey, Every bloodline trouble today we command you to bow to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Somebody, your father was 55 when he lost his job. You are 55 and you have lost your job. Oh, Mazagadamayagadi. He said, I will destroy the rebuke. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Oh, let's take the communion. We'll take the first part. Just the first part, the bread. His body was broken. So that our bodies will not be broken. Anybody, you are sick here. I pray healing in your body. In the name of Jesus. Sugar diabetes is going miraculously. High blood pressure is going. That is why I've already told you. When you go home, don't go worry about the pills. It's not your problem. Don't go worry that pastor cannot sleep. Cast your bed into the Lord. Hallelujah. It's yoke. It's easy. It's bending this light. We can break this into two. His body was broken so that my body will not be broken. We can take this bread. And when he took the cup, he said, this is the cup of my new covenant. Do this as often as possible. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody, by virtue of this cup, you will not die before your time. In the arrow of Lucifer, in the accident, and when there is surgery against you, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. May you take this cup. Oh, those who are watching my Facebook, we didn't invite you. Please, you can also have yours. Hallelujah.
That's why everything is one. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Yes. So when you think that you're poor, you remain poor. When you think that you're rich, you remain rich. That's a very powerful message. The Bible says, weeping men do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. And so our pace, our, our waiting is over. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much for that message. Then look at the book of Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to 15, really quick. I know you're wondering how does that relate to giving. Very quickly, I only have five minutes. Luke chapter 17 verse 11. And the Bible says, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Verse, and it says, And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they left and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when and when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. 
And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Now watch this. The Bible says Jesus healed ten lepers. And out of the ten lepers, one came back. I'm not very good at math, but I know for sure that a 10% of 10 is 1. A 100%, I mean a 10% of 100 is 10. So the Lord was telling me that out of the 10 that was clean, only one came back to give an appreciation to God. And that was that 10%. So God is telling us that our giving, it is not because he needs it, but it is a place of an appreciation to him for being a blessing to us. The Bible says, bring ye the tithe and offering so that they can be meat in my house. God does not need our money, but because he's a spirit, and the Spirit only understand the language of sacrifice. It is your sacrifice that will make you to be sanctified. It is your tithing that will make God to hold you tight. So you don't want to hold, you know, you see, I, I tell people, I tell my team, I say, you have to release so that you can receive. Yes. Yes. Until you release, you cannot receive. There is a Lord in the Spirit. It's called the law of giving. Yes. The Bible says when you give, it will be given back unto you. He said, good measure, press down, shaking together. Shall who give unto you? Men shall give unto you. So this morning, church, I want us to check in our purses, check in our minds, which is our bank, because I know some of us sitting here and was thinking, about, okay, what's in my account? Amen. So please. Let's be a blessing to the ministry. Let's be a blessing to the house of God so that God can bless us. Because our giving will bring blessing to us. Amen. 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 So let us rise up on our feet. And as the praise team sing.
Amen. Amen. 